Good morning and welcome to uh, our church service here at St. John's Lutheran Church in Brookfield, Wisconsin. We're located on the corner of Davidson and Barker Roads in Brookfield. And it is our uh, pleasure and honor to, to conduct this uh, worship service uh, online so that you can participate with us in a virtual way until we're able to gather again at some point in time uh, together again. And so uh, let us begin the worship service with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. His arms are open wide. You can come as you are with all your broken pieces, all your shameful scores. The pain you hold in your heart, bring it all to Jesus. You can come as you are. 
and whispers you're unworthy. Hear the sound of love that tells a different story. Shattering your darkness and push you through the lies. How tenderly he calls you, his arms are open wide. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your peace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through, your, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first lessons from Ezekiel, starting in chapter 18. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from wickedness, they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their lives. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions they had committed, they shall surely live, and they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise iniquity, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions that you have committed against me. Get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn, then, and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Before I begin reading the second lesson, there's a word, a Greek word, that is important for us to understand, 
And it is a key to understanding what Paul is writing in his letter to the church in Philippi. And it courses through both the first and the third uh, lesson. So I want to read from uh, my interpreters of the uh, Dictionary of the Bible. Uh, this was printed long before Wikipedia. And so uh, we, uh, we pastors and... Um, Scholars of Scripture uh, often refer to this, the, these uh, wonderful books to give some definition. And the word, and you're not going to hear it in the lesson because it's in English, but the word that Paul uses in verse 7 is a word called kenosis. So what does kenosis mean? Well, it's a Greek word meaning an emptying or depletion from the word kineo, which is the, the root word in Greek. So where Christ, where Jesus the Christ is said to have emptied himself, some interpreters understand this passage and this term in terms of Christ's preexistence, making kenosis virtually equivalent to incarnation. Others have applied an Adam Christology in which Christ, like Adam, was in the form, in other words, the image of God, but Christ did not repeat the mistake of Adam who, perhaps motivated by selfishness or conceit, and looking to his own interests, grasped at prerogatives reserved for God alone. In this case, the kenosis motif in Philippians 2, verse 7, dramatically expresses Christ's choice to accept the status of a slave to others. Because the passage is poetic, many would argue that it actually is from a hymn that predates Paul. It may allude to both a pre-existence and an Adam Christology. The concept of kenosis has proved useful in theological discussions of pre-existence and what self-emptying might mean with regard to divine attributes. So now I will read what Paul has written using the word kenosis in the, uh, verse 7. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your 
own salvation with fear and trembling for a God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him and he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it from human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the Father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed in him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. These lessons speak directly to the nature of God and to the nature of, of Jesus Christ, who had the authority and the power of God now, I often and jokingly say, if I were God, I would do this. Or actually, I say, if I were God's advisor, I would do this. For instance, if I were God, I would take the water that's being dumped on Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, and I would shift it over to California Oregon, Idaho, I would, I would relieve the suffering of all of these people just by one simple act, if I were God. And I could go right down the list. And I've got a long list of, uh, for God to consider. And apparently God has these things under advisement, really, I think, maybe. If I were God, I would eliminate suffering with the the back of my hand, just kind of one fell stroke and all the suffering would end. I, if I were God, I wouldn't have made those Israelites go through the desert for 40 years. I would, have, I would have put the land of milk and honey right next to Egypt so they get there in a couple of days and then they wouldn't have to complain about not having enough food or water. I would just simply give them what they wanted so that they could love me because I, as a God, need that love, and so therefore. But, you know, knowing we human beings, it wouldn't take the Israelites long to complain about the land of milk and honey. Probably it wouldn't have taken them that long, or us, if we had been living in the Garden of Eden, to find something to complain about. 
No, God, is, God does not manipulate things. God has given us the freedom to choose. And we make our choices. God does not use his power in a covert, coercive way. God uses God's power in a persuasive way. Jesus never uses his power to coerce anyone or to manipulate anyone. What he does, he just brings out the sin in people for them to see for themselves how they are the ones who are manipulative out of self-interest, out of ambition. We, we, we manipulate to get what we want. It's a very eye-centered approach to life. And, and we are all sinful. We all know what, what I'm talking about here. Uh, we, we need our needs filled. And so we will go and do way, things in, in ways that perhaps are not the most righteous. Uh, although we do cover our intentions with, well, with good reason and thought, we, we do things, we cover our manipulative, sinful actions by good intentions. We like to think of ourselves as good, so we don't really like to see ourselves as sinful. We'll, we'll, we'll block that one out, even though in the beginning of our worship service we do this confession and forgiveness, right? But even sometimes in faith, we, we believe in order that we get something, you know, uh, we get eternal life, you know, God, you know we, 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 I believe in order to get, you fill in the blank of why we might believe in God. Maybe we believe in God because, you know, uh, not because we believe that, that we're, better than those who do not, but isn't there a little bit of something in there? No, the nature of God is love, and God is not manipulative. God is not self-serving, and we know this through Christ who emptied himself in order to be a servant to, to us. But he never, as I've said, coerces us or manipulates us to believe him. Now he comes across the the elders and the chief priests, those who are who are in the religious order on top. And and I have and I have to say this, I have great sympathy for them uh, because they are the religious leaders, and they are conserving. What has, been, what has been handed down to them through the generations, through their fathers and forefathers and mothers and foremothers, the ways of God. Uh, just as Moses handed down the Ten Commandments and those commandments were handed down through the generations and as God's laws were handed down through the generations, the chief priests and the elders made sure that that order was protected. This is the way of God. This is how we understand God. This is how we understand righteousness. And now, here comes this nobody out of nowhere and is challenging all of their authority. And before this reading, Jesus was in the temple the day before overturning the tables, complaining that the chief priests and the elders have made the temple a den of robbers. And now he's back again, and the chief priests, although they don't actually mention that incident, they're saying, by what authority are you doing these things? By what authority do you teach? And Jesus, you know, Jesus, he sees the trap that they're setting. So he turns it. He knows them. And so he turns the question on themselves so that they may recognize their own sinfulness 
as he lifts up the people who live on the margins of society, who know they're, they're not good people, but by knowing that they, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, when they heard John, came to, them, came to John in repentance, a turning around of their lives. They recognized it in themselves. They saw the sin and asked for forgiveness. Whereas the chief elders and the, and the priests, they couldn't see it in themselves. The people, the house of Israel that Ezekiel is preaching to, the prophet Ezekiel, had the same message to the house of Israel. Repent. You are no longer people of compassion and understanding. You are people who oppress the poor. You oppress the marginalized for your own gain. And, and so Jesus is, has turned the table and said, my authority is recognized by the very people that you don't. And what's so interesting and so ironic, the chief priests and the elders are there to judge Jesus. What they don't know is that they're judging themselves. And so the, the story ends there. We don't know what happens. But Paul picks this up in his letter to the, Phil, uh, the Philippians about the self-emptying, about, about being humble and looking at our neighbor and, the, and our neighbor's needs, not judging our neighbor, but loving our neighbor uh, as Jesus would say, as we love ourselves. By, and, by, and seeing all people, all people, for the value that God has put in them. Just like in Jesus' society, the, the prostitutes and the tax collectors, their lives didn't matter. They had no value to their society. So the people thought. Not the good people. But Jesus sees how much their lives matter to God. And Paul is saying the same thing to his congregation in Philippi. Do not judge your neighbor and do not think of them as worthless or less than you. Think of them as better than you. And, and serve them, hear them, listen to them, because they are the ones who have repented. Can you repent of your sin? And for me, I'm like all of you, sometimes it's difficult to see it, that sin. I didn't sin. No, that, that's the, I, and I can throw blame all over the place. It's hard. To look within. It's hard to hear what a prophet might say to us and to me. I'm a good person. I don't need to repent. I'm not like them. And Jesus said, oh yeah, well, yeah, you're not. They have seen the truth. You have not. And so Jesus says to the chief elders and the priests, not in any direct way, but through his questions, he's saying, and will you repent and be obedient to the love of God that pervades all things, the love that, that pervades and values even those people that you do not, those who are on the outside, those who are on the margins, uh, those who the society has ordered them to be on the bottom rung. And so Jesus, he turns it upside down. You know, you've got to be careful with Jesus. You know, uh, I was reading a commentator who said that he, uh, he was watching Dr. Phil 
And, and somebody asked Dr. Phil, if you had one person to interview, who would you interview? And he said, without, a, without missing a beat, Jesus Christ. I'd love to sit down with him and talk about the meaning of life. And the commentator said, um, I don't know if you, <laughs> that's such a good idea because Jesus has a way of turning it upside down and us inside out. And before you know it, Dr. Phil would be asked to sell everything he had and follow him. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jesus was not a philosopher that you sat down and had a cup of coffee and talked about the, uh, the mysteries of life. Jesus was more about action. He said, do the will of God, and the will of God is to love your neighbor as, you so, uh, as yourself. Repent of your sin. Repent of your, of your self-centeredness. Move out of yourself. Empty yourself. Humble yourself. And then you can really know God and the power of God through that love. Amen. Lord, I come, I confess. Amen, Ken. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son took on all bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the nations toward life where our ways are unfair. Give us new hearts and new spirits where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds, and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn this congregation away from our own interests toward the interests of others. Fill us with compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you at home. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering, a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ has been given for you, and the blood of Christ has been shed for you.
We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Yes, I will rise out of these ashes, rise from this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground. I will rise. Yes, I will rise out of these ashes, rise from this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground. I will rise. Cause on the ground and hope is nowhere to be found and love is a figment I once knew yet I hold on to what I know is true and I will rise out of these ashes rise Trouble I find in this rubble on the ground that will rise. We rise out of these ashes, rise. From this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground that will rise. I keep on coming to this place. And I don't know quite how. down my life in hopes to die and somehow somehow I might rise yes I will rise out of these ashes rise from this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground I will rise yes I will rise out of these ashes rise from this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground, I will rise. Because he who is in me is greater than I will ever be, and I will rise. Because he who is in me is greater than I will ever be, and I will rise. I will rise out of these ashes, rise from this trouble I found in this rubble on the ground. I will rise. Thank you, Ken. Well, this concludes our worship service. I just have a couple of announcements to make. Next week, uh, we will be moving indoors for our worship services. So we ask that you register uh, uh, if you want to attend um, so that we can keep a, a good count of, of who's going to be here and, and uh, how we're going to uh, conduct the service. Uh, Pam is working on a video to, for you to see what to expect when you come back in for the worship service, uh, all of the safety precautions and so forth. So I urge you to go online and take a look at that. Um, secondly, we're, October 4th is really our rally day. Of course, this, this year rally day looks a little different. 
But our programming begins in October with our Sunday school, confirmation, high school, youth uh, ministries. Uh, and Carrie and Joanna will be, uh, will be sending out information to you parents about that. Uh, and then also I would like to invite all of you to attend either in person or via Zoom. We're going to do simultaneously uh, an adult education uh, series this fall on race relations, having a difficult but a, I, I believe a constructive and thought-filled discussion on, on race relations. And the first book that we're reading is Jim Wallace's book uh, entitled America's Original Sin, Race Relations in the United States. So I would encourage you to buy that book and, and read it. Uh, we're going to read the first four chapters for the discussion on Saturday at 9.30 here in the Fellowship Hall or online. Please register there. And then Pastor Karen Natterstad is also teaching a course this fall uh, from Gethsemane uh, via Zoom, all on Zoom, on Bible basics. And I think she's looking at social justice through, through the biblical perspective. What we want to do and what we are doing is we are offering these courses, these adult education classes to both St. John's and to the people at Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Brookfield so that together we can grow in faith and work together in these very difficult times and sharing resources and insights to, uh, with each other. So I encourage you to, again, look online and see what we have um, prepared for you as you come back. Uh, if you are, if you uh, choose to do so, um, and we look forward to either seeing you here or again uh, via via the virtual media. So, uh, go in peace, be safe, love the Lord. This hour I rise, out of these ashes rise. From this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground I will rise. This hour I rise, out of these ashes rise. From this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground I will rise. This hour I rise, out of these ashes rise. From this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground I will rise Yes, I will rise Out of these ashes rise From this trouble I find in this rubble on the ground I will rise